The Fed expects to raise quantitative easing activity in the second quarter. You may have heard a line like that or nuances of that if you are a follower of stocks, business or financial markets more broadly. Quantitative easing, just what the hell is that term? Well that's what today's video will be about. So let's break down quantitative easing. First, who does it? The answer, central banks. What is it? Quantitative easing is a strategy where the central bank, say the Fed, buys assets from financial institutions, usually treasuries, but it can include other assets, in exchange for cash. All central banks have a balance sheet, and they show you what kind of assets they hold on their balance sheet. Because central banks are self-operating branches of government, they're usually doing this with an intended outcome. Well, here's how the transaction works. When they buy assets from financial institutions, they exchange them for money, like any other transaction. But what is the intended purpose? By exchanging the assets for money, they are, by definition, increasing the amount of money banks and financial institutions now have. By increasing the amount of money banks and financial institutions now have, they are increasing the money supply. The money supply in an economy is often a proxy for the supply of loanable funds. When the supply of loanable funds goes up, this pushes down interest rates. With lower interest rates in an economy, you get encouraged investing and borrowing habits, which will fuel and inject growth in the economy. So when the economy is in bad shape or when tensions are rising and it's looking a little risky, quantitative easing is a policy a central bank can undergo to increase the money supply, lower interest rates, and all things equal, it increase the business activity associated with this. As interest rates are lower, people are more inclined to do things with borrowed money. This is a stimulant that injects economic activity. So that's when it occurs, why it occurs, and what it is. Quantitative easing can take very extreme forms. For example, the 2008-2009 financial crisis, the Fed had to absorb pretty much the detrimental obligations the big banks had. These toxic mortgage-backed securities, though considered assets, Many would say are liabilities and nothing close to being assets. However, to save the big banks, they made the transactions and injected a lot of cash into the money supply. What followed was years of very, very low interest rates. And if you look on the Fed's balance sheet over the years, you will see exactly what I'm talking about. So is quantitative easing a good thing? It does help us, but many have criticisms against it. Quantitative easing is so-called artificial economic growth. And quantitative easing and other central bank intervention can cause what's called a moral hazard. The simple notion that government can be there to save you can cause influential figures in the financial world to engage in riskier behavior. Incentivizing bad behavior is never a good thing. People also refer to this as crony capitalism. So that is the basics of quantitative easing in a nutshell. As always, we want to thank you guys for listening and happy investing.